This is part five of my homeschool planning series. And as promised, I am going to show you what is in my daily homeschooling binder. My name is Rachel and I am an eighth year homeschool mom veteran of three kids, currently ages nine, 13, and 15. Yes, I have a high schooler. And that creates a whole new dynamic for me to keep track of. You know what else you should know about me? I really love to plan and I really love to organize things. So if that is your jam, then I am the homeschool mom for you. If you haven't seen my other homeschool planning videos, let me give you a quick synopsis. Part one was all about why you should plan. There are a lot of people who don't like to plan and I understand because it can be a tedious process, but there is value in it. And so part one is all about why you should plan and how you can plan your homeschool year. Part two is, well, how do you get started? How do you plan the plan? Because you gotta have a strategy for how you're gonna plan or you're just gonna get overwhelmed with all the things there are to do. Part three is when your curriculum comes. How do you keep yourself organized again with all the tasks? A lot of curriculum requires some setup, some things to do before you can use it. And then what about the curriculum that you're creating yourself? Or what about the curriculum you're customizing? I have a whole process and a whole spreadsheet to show you how I kept on top of all the tasks so that I didn't have to remember every day what it was I was doing. Part four was all about my weekly planning binder because one of the things that I wanted was to be able to plan on the go. I didn't want to have to be in my homeschool room all the time just to plan. So I compiled everything into a binder so that if I was going on a road trip or if I was going to be sitting at music lessons, I could just take my planner and my binder with me and I would have all the information I needed to plan out my homeschool week. And so now we are on part five, which is about what I call my daily homeschool mom binder. This isn't necessarily about planning and it doesn't have to do necessarily either with my homeschool planner. What this binder has in it is going to be procedures and schedules and things that I may need to look at or refer to at any point of the homeschool week. So uh, sometimes I open it, sometimes I don't, but it's a much smaller binder and it is just for my reference because not everything has a teacher's manual. Some of the things I customized so much, I needed to say, well, this is how I'm going to do it. So that is what I'm going to show you today. So let's get into it. This is what I call my daily binder. And this is, some day, sometimes I never get into it, okay? But it's here for the things that I might need on a daily basis. Binder. So this is my yearly schedule. This is when I have planned breaks. I made a little legend down here, the light pink. These are for special days. This is my passion week. The yellow for my family co-op. Gray is no school, so on and so forth. I do have a video for how I plan our year, so check out this video right here. That has not changed. That is exactly what I did this year also. So this is the binder, kind of like my teacher's manual for the whole week. I might not have it sitting out on my table. It just depends if I need to refer to it. Because like I've told you before, once it's kind of become routine and I just know it, I might not need stuff that's in here. But just in case we take the binder to a different room and I don't have access to my highlighter, my pen, or my markers, I have some of these in here. These are stickers, so if I have um, a reward chart or I wanna put a sticker on an A-plus paper, I've got stickers handy here. I have a folder here for this is random stuff that I wanna do something with, but I'm not sure what to do with. I got that random folder here. This is a really cool resource that I got at a homeschool conference from Ginger Hubbard about conflict with your children and how you could address it with them. So like if my children are blame shifting or making excuses, here is questions that I could ask them. Here's the sin that we're dealing with pride and here's some scriptures that I could go over with them. So this is super handy if I'm dealing with difficult behavior, which could be a daily basis, right? 
So it's right here in my daily binder. Okay, then I've got my schedule. Like I told you, we're not even really doing this, but the first few weeks of school when I attempted to do this, it was really handy for me to have this sitting out. And when I get a new schedule, I probably won't even keep it here in my binder. I probably will post it up in my room. If you watch this video here on my schedule, you will understand why I would have it posted up in my room. But right now we're just, we're playing around with all kinds of stuff with our schedule right now. But I went ahead and put this all in here in case we're trying to form new routines, it's all here. So actually I should probably go through here and show you what I've got in here. I've got my schedules, my procedures, my Friday meetings, which actually this doesn't even go in here anymore because I have since moved this stuff to my weekly planning stuff. My co-op days, which is my family fun day, my current week's worksheets, my special games and activities, any current literature study that I'm working on, and P2P is Passport to Purity, and I'll explain that here in a minute. These are, and then the next tab I've got here are my procedures. So all my procedures as I'm getting used to morning time and trying to incorporate all these things that I would love to be able to incorporate into my morning time. As we get more efficient with that, as we start school on time, then I have this procedure here to say, okay, our morning time, I have an hour set aside, for example. I would like to do all of this for an hour and a half. <laughs> but as we become more efficient and maybe are able to start school earlier, then I can start adding in some of these other things. And here is the procedure for all the things I would like to do. I went ahead and made a Faithopedia procedure my geography activities, my history procedure. So every time we do Faithopedia or the missionary story read aloud, these are all the things that I'm considering that I'm not necessarily detailing in my planner. So I might just say we're reading this chapter this week, but when I'm getting ready to read, I'm grabbing my geography activity. I am deciding, okay, these are the questions that I want to go over after I read today's chapter and maybe we'll want to journal today depending on how much time I took to read. The free write is just journal about something that you learned today. I have a math procedure because I like to do math drills with my daughter. Check out this video about all the fun math games and the way that I drill the math facts. So this is just kind of what how I can incorporate that in here. My daughter's grammar procedures because we're doing more than one grammar curriculum so I kind of needed an idea of how I could help her start to be more independent while I'm working with my younger daughter. She can be doing these, how she's going to study her geography cards and so on and so forth and I actually gave my daughter this sheet also so she can see here's some fun places you can study your flashcards. I even brainstormed that for her, like you could go out to the trampoline, you could study them under the trampoline, you could go out to the swing. So just because my daughter needs things to be fun, so I kind of did that for her. And then I've got this five common topics thing. This is really a discussion guide that I got from Classical Conversations. This is very classical. This is one of the canons of rhetoric for critical thinking, for being able to discuss deeply things. So I have this in here as a reference for me as we're re doing read alouds. I can remember, okay, let's let's practice how is um, the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street similar to where we live in our neighborhood and how is it different? Because you know, the Vanderbeekers live in Harlem, New York. How is that different from where we live here? So this is kind of what that is here. My co-op, I'm also still trying to figure that out. This might be though, like when I do a book club party, for example, and I'm gathering stuff for a book club party or some sort of special thing that we're gonna do on this day and I have worksheets for that. That's all gonna go in here as I'm planning it. Worksheets, this is for the current week, what I'm going to be working on. So for example, those George Mueller worksheets that I showed you in the other binder, I need to pull those over for next week. I need to pull out a couple more and put them in here for next week. This is the my daughter's current mental math because I printed out the good and the beautiful math. It is not spiral bound in a nice book. So I have that tucked in here. This is what we're currently working on. We did some stuff for our first day of school that I need to put in my kids' portfolios. 
So then I've got this special games and activities. This is just a tab again if we're doing something. So if I've got like a Valentine party coming up or we're doing something special for Thanksgiving, this is where I would transfer those activities here. The current literature study that we're doing, I did buy an arrow guide for Vanderbeekers of 141st Street and I bought a dark guide for my younger daughter. When we are doing those, then this is where I will put those sheets, the current lit literature study. And then Passport to Purity, this is something that I'm doing with my middle child. This is information that I need to know on how to plan for that event. So it is in this binder because as you know, sometimes your kids need to work quietly and independently, but you don't wanna be on your phone because you don't wanna look like you're not paying attention. So this is like a way that I can be productive while they're, they just need quiet time but supervision. Then I have this in here for me to study and figure out and like plan without being on my phone. So that's why I threw that in there. And then this tab is the things that I need to grade and then transfer, I either need to throw it away or put it in their portfolio. This is all graded. I think we're gonna throw it away though. But when my daughter finishes her Good and the Beautiful math, it's printed out, then it goes in here or they wanna give me their free writes or their worksheets or something, whatever I need to grade that is not attached in a book, it can go right in here. For more inspiration for your homeschool planning, check out my homeschool planning playlist. But I also have this other playlist right here called Homeschool Inspiration. And that just is kind of to help us think differently about our homeschool and think differently about how we may plan. So there are all kinds of videos for you to check out and I hope you do. Until next time, bye.